On today's episode of Locked on Avalanche, the question that everybody's asking with all this time off that the Avs have, who is their preference for round two? The Stars or the Golden Knights? We will discuss coming up next on Locked on Avalanche. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche. Uh, yeah, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter. X, there we go. Locked on Avalanche on Instagram and threads. Questions, comments, concerns, or opinions, locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. Definitely subscribe to our subtext link to that's in the show notes below because when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one on one and we get your opinion on everything Avalanche related, which we share on this very podcast which we will be doing here momentarily sir um a couple things we'll get to today if you're watching over on youtube there have been a couple award announcements for finalists um a couple of them do not include avalanche players one of them really no surprise does so we'll discuss that in a little bit but yeah where we're gonna start kyle is we as we sit and wait and watch the Dallas Stars and Vegas Golden Knights beat up on each other. Um, and it's you're you're waiting because that's your next opponent. And it, you know, when when you're if when you're following on social media and stuff like that, and you're reading a lot of stuff and what people would prefer, you're seeing a lot of people put up like polls. Um, it's I don't want to say it's even, but it's not one of those uh things where one is 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 so much out. Uh, further than the other in terms of like percentages i think people make a good case for either one of these teams right here and, and we'll get to some subtext people in a minute but where were you sitting on this because we haven't really discussed it too much you and i so i'm kind of curious where to know like where, to know where you would your mind is at right now you know going into the playoffs this was honestly a pick your poison situation what do you want do you want the Vegas Golden Knights, the matchup, the marquee, defending champ versus defending champ two years ago? Or do you want the Dallas Stars, statistically a better matchup for the Avalanche, that you have some success? And there's the Duchesne factor. You want to ruin that <laughs> for Matt Duchesne? Yeah. Well, there's your opportunity there. After watching this series a little bit, because that's the wonderful thing you get to sit back and it's almost like caesar you're getting to watch them fight it out in the ring i kind of am leaning towards dallas right now for for what reason though is it just because of the matchup or because you think that would be better television um it's it's a division rival like there's so many avenues you can go down as to why you would prefer this team what is it for you it's definitely matchup when it comes to who the avalanche are facing i don't care what makes for good television i'm not here for the network i'm here for the avalanche to win the stanley cup so mm -hmm. i i don't really care what the ratings are i know the vegas matchup would be great but again with the mark stone factor and like all this the grand pomp and circumstance with vegas and what this team looks like now in the playoffs with ltir a thing of the past i really don't like vegas matching up with colorado especially watching that game last night like time of recording like this, this would be wednesday night I, they take a lot of blue line shots and knowing what your gift can and cannot see mm -hmm. i like dallas's like net front presence matching up with colorado because of who colorado has defensively i just don't like vegas and being able to score from wherever I like mm -hmm. the more centralized Dallas effort. And statistically, in the playoffs, Vegas and Dallas are very similar, especially on penalty kill power play. They're identical, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's there is no wrong answer, but with my heart, I say Dallas. Um, what you just said is, is true. There really is no wrong answer here. And, and that's why I brought up kind of like how people are 
commenting on it and voting on it if they were doing that <clears throat> uh, because you can see both sides of this for various reasons. Um, you mentioned that you you don't care about you know the ratings and stuff like that. I, I I'm not saying I completely don't care about that, but a Vegas Avalanche series would be would be a Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. People will be tuning into that without a doubt. Um, aside from that, though, uh, it, you know, everydayers who, who listen to this know just my disdain for the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, and you, you share in that, too. And we're not the only two. I think outside of that fan base, they are the evil empire. P people dislike them. So um, so having said that, it's like, OK, well, well, what do you want? Like, do you want Dallas to beat them? wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because then you know we don't have to hear about Vegas anymore or do you want to be the team that beats them mm -hmm. and and you know bring them in and and now you now you it's twofold you have beaten them because you just are me <laughs> I don't know how the players feel uh just completely don't like them and you took the defending champs out so you know I think that plays a a, a role in into it too <laughs> As far as matchups go, um, I think you know it's interesting because uh, you, you know you were talking about like Dallas. I think you do match up well with Dallas. Um, and the the funny thing about is with, with Vegas is you know they made all those those moves, um, and it's 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 all new still. You know what I mean? And and you know you didn't have a lot of time to to play through like problems bringing in brand new guys because they were injured. Like Tomas Hurdle was injured for a while, didn't play right away. And so he didn't play with, with Mark Stone and Jack Eichel. And so I think that is still maybe they're still in, in figuring it out mode. And are you seeing that right now? Yeah, they came out and they won two games, but Dallas has come back and now won the last three. So it's tough to say the matchups because you haven't really played against this Vegas team as they're made up right now. Nobody really has. And you bring up an interesting thing when it comes to rationalizing this road for the Colorado Avalanche, which would be more fulfilling. If you want a Stanley Cup playing Winnipeg, and let's say theoretically Dallas, and then let's just play real terrible devil, devil's advocate for opponents, the Western Conference Finals is Colorado and Nashville. And then... You play a weak opponent coming out of the East. In your Stanley Cup, you win. Do you feel good about that? Or do you want this murderous row, Mortal Kombat Tower of yeah. like your Winnipeg, your Vegas, you get that Edmonton matchup, and then you play the Rangers? Is that you want, do you want that? The adversity, like you're knocking off defending Stanley Cup champion, uh, pre President's Cup, President's mm -hmm. Trophy winner. Like, is, does that, is that a more fulfilling road? Or do you want that easy path? just to say you want it is it enough mm -hmm. because you could play both ways but with this team like how you came out against winnipeg that's one thing but can you expect that in round two again in round three and then in the stanley cup you can't keep testing fate like i would like a more ideal matchup which would be dallas but for the heart factor the fandom factor i would love to sweep vegas it would make <laughs> me so happy because yeah. of everything they it was one of those they came out with the pomp and circumstance and they didn't they came out acting like they won one until they did and they mm -hmm. have a stanley cup so now they they have everything and they're kind of annoying with it it would be great to knock them out of the playoffs it would be but matchup wise they're built like colorado's like you said the evil empire they're built to knock colorado out uh yeah, I mean they're built. They're built to knock everybody out, you know. That, so, um, but you know, as far as like the road, I, I I'm all about the tougher road. Uh, speaks speaks volumes, and I'm not trying to take anything away from from the Tampa Bay Lightning, but but go go ask that fan base. I mean, that fan base will be like, yeah, we we want them, you know. But okay, okay you know, truncated seasons. Do, do you? I mean, if if that was the Avalanche. I'd be like, hey, our names are on the cup just like anybody else's. Uh, but 
there's uh, there's no asterisk there, but in my mind, it'd be like it was different. Yeah. It was a different season. You didn't have to go through any like a gauntlet like you normally do. So yeah, just I, mean, I, th- I think that's the difference. No, I don't think I, I wouldn't want an easy road. And I think in in either one, Winnipeg, I, I a lot of people had them winning that series. True. So you know that 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 should have been a more difficult series than it was. Um, no matter who you're getting in the second round, that's a difficult series right there. And then we'll see what happens in in you know if if they win that and go on into the Western Cup and hopefully Stanley Cup final, whatever. But no, I think you do want uh, a difficult road. I think you do. Um, we'll see. We'll see. So what? You got a final thought here before we? Yeah. You and I do agree. You want a difficult road, especially with whoever's coming out of the East, because the East, those are some scary teams too. And I know we are sure. so Western Conference focused, but looking across the bracket at the East, those are some really good teams too. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> just because this is like kind of like the big topic right now, I do want to get to some subtext people and see what uh, they have to say. So why don't we get our first break in? Uh, we'll do that quickly, and then we'll be back on the other side of it with uh, some subtext thoughts on who they would prefer for the second round opponent for the Colorado Avalanche. All right, let's hear from FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. That is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Go sign up right now. All right, let's get some subtext uh, people in here. Just uh, curious to see what they have to say. Coy says Vegas because of home ice advantage. And that is, you know, you would get that if you play Vegas. You don't get it if you play Dallas, obviously. Um, he says, and Dallas is a wagon right now. So um, eh, maybe. But I, I, the home ice, I get that. It, it would be nice to have uh, some home ice advantage. Madam Battleaxe. Um, let's see. She said, I would rather see the ads play the stars. It has everything to do with playing a fair and proper team that is that will get brought up ad nauseum uh i mean it is already so uh on this podcast i will do my best to not bring it if it happens to be vegas uh that that's that's my main issue with them and i think that's the main issue with a lot of people is why they don't like them so much i don't want to make it the point of emphasis and have everything revolve around that it maybe will get brought up once or twice but i will do my best to not bring it up all the time because i know people don't want to hear it all the time and that is the most, I think that is the cleanest way to address the Vegas Golden Knights by talking about Dallas in that way. That's a proper comment from the belated birthday girl, Madam Battle X. Ah, oh, was it her birthday? I didn't see that. Yeah, it was. Oh, we missed it the other day. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. Well, Happy birthday. <clears throat> the, but to call it a fair and balanced matchup with Dallas, mm-hmm. where you would not get that in Vegas, I mean, it. it's it's the most unspoken spoken about thing in hockey right now. I kind of would lean towards Dallas because of that. And if Vegas does end up doing the terrible and knocking Colorado out, that's going to be the big factor that every fans that are left behind because of Vegas Mm -hmm. talk about for that reason. But for some reason, the NHL does nothing about. And and I mean Dallas has some like Jamie Ben. I'm not a fan of Jamie Ben. I don't like the way he plays. Um, but Vegas, like, did you see the the like the left or the right turnaround punch to the face that Petrangelo gave? I don't know who it was on the stars. I think it was Sagan. Yeah, I think it was uh, Tyler Sagan on the stars. Like, just not not called for. Like, and they just it's stuff like that, Kyle. That just again, but it's stuff like that that makes me want to play them. Mm. to just bury them and send them home. Uh, Zach says, I would like to play Vegas, home ice advantage. Dallas looks really good. Um, I think they can skate around Vegas all day long with a fast-paced game, and I don't want to play Dallas because I'll send a lot of money. uh, I'll spend a lot of money going to a game in Dallas. Mm. Yeah. Uh, So. It's it's an easy travel. 
it's and like going yeah. if you're going away if you want to do that whole series like vegas and dead and companies in vegas i mean i'd get distracted <laughs> are they like right now or, they're get, or yeah they're getting ready for the ready residency there? uh oh residency really okay um Easton, this is a funny one. He says, wish we could play both of them to get revenge for past playoffs. Oh, my word. <laughs> and I responded to him. I was like, that'd be cool. Yeah, we should be able to play two series at once. Oh. We'll play Dallas and no off days. We play Dallas one day, Vegas the next day, eliminate them both. You know, whoever loses between two of them gets a second opportunity, double elimination for that team, and we'll send them all home. One fell swoop. Yeah, throw Vegas, and, uh, throw Seattle in there one more time just to <laughs> – cleanse that one too uh abs uh fan forever it's like choosing between brussels sprouts and haggis uh <laughs> both both are unappealing to me but i'd have to say i prefer vegas because dallas appeared weak in the playoffs uh but their last performance gave me doubts in the, in that assessment um oh and and they don't want to be yelling at the television and, and give uh, a bad uh learning tool for their daughter to be yelling at the television either so they, they feel there'd be more de- yelling at the television if it was dallas and you're seeing ottinger take on a very similar role to what your gift did yeah and his resurgence deep in these playoffs that'd be a, an interesting little matchup but yes dallas is getting hot too yeah um vargar says i've never in my life rooted for dallas in any series but that's what i'm doing right now <laughs> It, this is what you get. You get a little bit of everything. It, it, it's back and forth, and I, and I understand both uh, both sides of it. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to wait and see. What's the next one? Is uh, game game six is Friday, Friday right? Night. Tonight, and then yep. so and then if that goes to seven, uh, I'm I'm not, not scheduled in front of me. I'm assuming they do it every other day. Um, that's Sunday, so we'll know by Sunday night or Friday night if if that game ends. So uh, we shall see. We should know the opponent by next episode. We will know the opponent by next episode. Yeah. So just chill to the next episode in the famous words. <laughs> I love it. Mr. I Dre. Love it. <laughs> um, all right. It's it's getting to be award season and that they are making the announcements for the awards. Um, and we got um Kale McCarr is obviously nominated for the Norris. Um, I don't think it's really any surprise that he's gonna that he got nominated, and I don't think it's, it's any surprise who the three are. It's him, Roman Yossi, and Quinn Hughes. Um, it'll be interesting to see the voting on this. <clears throat> I don't think we're we're not in any you know uh, fantasy land here where I, I can't imagine Kel McCarr is going to win this. So I think this is is Quinn Hughes's to lose. I'm just interested to see the voting on how close it is because you read a lot of whatever and the people who are favoring Quinn Hughes always are throwing out the it's not particularly close comments, which I always I always get a kick out of. You're hearing that with with uh, the heart, which they haven't announced yet with uh, Kucherov and, and McKinnon. I've seen so many Lightning fans be like, it's Kucherov and it's not particularly close. This is going to be the closest heart vote probably in decades if you ask me so it's going to be close so i wish we could just stop saying that people are saying it with the norris and with quinn hughes um i think quinn hughes is going to win it um but i i don't think it's going to be as much of a runaway as people think and i I, i'll wait wait for the vote to come out obviously but i think it's going to be closer than people expect you know I think I might be leaning towards their that might be correct, but not for the reasons you think. And mm-hmm. I think with the name, the top five names for the heart are going to be the same year in, year out. Just shake them up. And that's going to be the same for the Norris for the foreseeable future until Roman Yossi moves on. Yeah. But it's going to be Hughes, McCarr, and Yossi. And that's going to be your Norris. Well, I think it'll be I think it'll be Hughes, McCarr, and then a third. I don't think it's always going to be Yossi. Like because there's a lot of good young defensemen. And I, I think it'll always I, I think it's gonna be Hughes and McCarr for for years to come. And then the third will be kind of like a revolving door. And I think that voting when it comes to Quinn Hughes, I think it might get a little skewed because of Kale McCarr in the stretch in crunch time and Yossi in that Nashville run that they had leading up to the end of the season. I think mm. that might throw the votes off in 
Kale McCarr and Yossi votes and Quinn getting all these votes, I think that might be where the separation is. Mm-hmm. But I I feel like that Nashville run, I, I don't think this is a slight on McCarr. I feel like there might be a little bit more of a turn towards Yossi because of that incredible run to end the year for Nashville. Yeah, if that didn't happen, you probably don't see Roman Yossi in here. So, And, and I think, you know, a, a lot of people when it comes to the Norris – want to put the focus on defense. I mean, that, that's, that's, you're awarding the best defender. It makes sense. But the way that they word the award is in all aspects of the game. So you have to take offense into account here. It's, it's, you can weigh it however you want to weigh it. If you want to put more weight on the defensive side of things, feel free. Um, if you want to make it all around, like what they do all around, like you can, you can, you know, organize any way you want to, but the way that it's worded that the NHL puts out in, in all aspects of a defenseman offense is a part of that. Uh, with as far as Hughes and McCarr goes, they're right. You know, they're one, two. Um, if McCarr played, didn't miss five games, he probably would have passed Hughes by a couple points. That's neither here nor there. I think where everybody is separating the two this one comes this year is defensive stats mm-hmm. where Quinn Hughes does have a, a wide gap between him and Kale McCarr and it's no secret the Avalanche struggled on defense this year Kale McCarr included so I think that is where the separation comes because offensively points Q- Quinn Hughes has him but you know the the more like, a lot of the offensive metrics of you know goals per 60 expected goal like McCarr has him in all of that stuff. So off, but not by a lot. So offensively, they're close, leaning towards McCarr. Defensively, this year, it's way in Quinn Hughes's favor. But that, you know, it doesn't mean Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes is a better defenseman this year. I, it does not mean that he is a better defenseman than Kale McCarr. He got the best of McCarr this season in defensive stats, those defensive stats, I do not anticipate to be the same for, for Kale McCard next year. I think he amps it up a lot more. Um, and you're going to see him win multiple Norris trophies, but for the Norris, that's where the separation comes this year. Yeah. And Vancouver's positioning all year long when it comes to the standings also helps. And you're asking the hockey writers to look into deeper stats. No, Chris, they're not going to do that. You're looking at eye test. And when it comes to eye test all year long, Having Vancouver sit in on top of the standings, Quinn Hughes is going to get the nod there. Mm-hmm. Kale McCarr, you're going to have to put up a little bit more oomph and more mm-hmm. than two highlight real goals to get the eyes of the hockey writers, and that'll be next year. Um, so that's where that is. Uh, the, the Bill Masterson Award was announced as well um, and kind of thought Jonathan Drouin would be nominated for this he was not but we got to get a quick break in here so let's do that we'll talk about him uh on the other side we'll do that right now all right game off we got to pause here to talk more yes we do about monopoly go and i know what you're thinking you guys have already talked about this uh if you're thinking that that just makes me believe you have not downloaded the game yet because the people who have downloaded it and played it are not saying that. They love that we are talking about Monopoly Go because it is as addicting game as you can get. Kyle and I are loving this thing. I didn't see you steal. Well, you were busy the last couple of days. You didn't steal any money from me uh, recently, but I, I'm expecting uh, retribution pretty soon here. Oh, I, when I got done with my conference and everything, I logged into Monopoly Go and checked yeah. and saw that you're running away with things, put it back in my pocket <laughs> and got back to work. Uh, so in Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for timed uh, tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get, like unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes and cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. And there's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. And in the great words of Wayne Campbell, game on. All right. The Bill Masterson Award uh, was uh, the, the finalists were announced 
And this goes to the award honoring perseverance, dedication, uh, perseverance and dedication to hockey and sportsmanship uh, to hockey. So the three finalists of this are Frederick Anderson uh, of the Carolina Hurricanes, Connor Ingram of the, are we calling them Arizona Coyotes anymore? Or do, do we, do we have to change that? Defunct. The, the Utah Hockey Club, I think mm -hmm. is what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and Oliver Shillington of the Carolina, uh, excuse me, Calgary Flames. Um, and this was one where I thought Jonathan Drewen could be in the mix. Because when you use those words, um, perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey, you think like comeback player of the year award. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's kind of like what what this award really is. Um, but these three guys, all like their perseverance and their comeback stories are all things that happened off the ice and dealing with personal issues, mental health issues, addiction issues, whatever the case may be, and coming back from that. You can't. You can't. You can't fight that you like know. that, that, that is dedication. That is perseverance. That is a comeback story. And what Jonathan drew ended was fantastic solely on the ice. So I think he's, you know, you're going to lose out, which is fine. I'm not trying to, to defend that. Like those three guys, what they did, what they went through to come back from it is they're deserving of that stuff. And the bill Masterson award, there is no loser depending on right. all yeah. of these stories. And if you want to give, an award to an entire team, that would be the Colorado Avalanche. Jonathan Drouin and Alexander Yorgiev for what they did on the ice. Those are, like, I know it doesn't roll into the playoffs, but what you just saw out of Yorgiev, those are huge comebacks for both players. This season, incredible work off the ice. Sam Gerrard, Valentin Chushkin, also took some off the ice addressing yeah. publicly. And... Really, I think there was some inspiring things in that locker room and league wide because you saw that happening a lot, especially after Sam Gerard. Players just taking a step back and focusing on mental health and right. battling battling some things in their life. So Sam Gerard, Valanchushkin, tip of the hat there as well. Right. But again, there is no loser in this category. I cheer everybody on mentioned in their stories of this year, but kudos to whoever wins that award. Yeah, I have no problem with the award going in, in this direction because a lot of times you you see just a guy who had a terrible year last year and then just turned it around. Yep. Uh, but it, it's clear the NHL is going for um, you know things that happen and, and addressing the things that these guys address. Um, just as just going off of the article on NHL.com, Anderson, uh, Frederick Anderson. Uh, began the season 4 1 0 with the Carolina Hurricanes before doctors discovered a blood clotting issue, causing him to miss 50 games uh, from November to March. And then he returned and he went 9 1 0. So he didn't play a lot. So this does not have to do with like really what he's doing on the, which he did well when he came back, but he didn't play a ton of games this year, which is great. But he came back is the, 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 the kind of the main point here after blood clots, serious stuff there. Just the fact that he came back is a minor miracle. Ingram nearly nearly retired due to OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and lingering depression before seeking help in the player's assistance program. Um, and it goes on. So, you know, he, he came back from that. Uh, Shillington re returned to the Calgary Flames um, January 25th after more than 18 months away, including missing the entire 2022-23 season to attend to his mental health. Like you said, man, there's no loser there. Like all the fact that those three guys went and addressed what they needed to address and then came back and are just still playing in the league. Um, you wish you could give it to all three of them. So you, you read stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, Jonathan Drewen, you had a great year, man. But uh, you didn't have blood clots. You didn't yeah. have, you know what I mean? You didn't go through the stuff that they went through. So uh, it, it, it's it's it sucks that somebody has to lose that, believe it or not. And, you know, I think next year, if Gabe Landeskog does come back and play some games, Oof. I feel like this award might also take a new name because of how the career for Bill Masterson ended. It's mm. always a weird award for me to call it an award and all this, like, dedication to the game for how his story ended. I feel like it would be a better thing to name it the Gabe Landeskog Award going forward. <laughs> Whoa. Just, I well, just... people have said they, they would like these awards to be renamed yeah, um, and more current 
so people can kind of you know associate them with with a player that they maybe have watched before because we it. have we have helmets now because of masterton but mm. to I, it just is a weird award for me to name it after that and if landis Gog does return that is three years of dedication and passion for the game and I taking mean, care of what he needs to in returning that's the ultimate so yeah yeah, so we'll see. Um, and then a couple of awards that have already been um, announced. Avs are not involved in in these, but hey, you know you had the Vesna, which is no surprise there. Hellebuck, Thatcher Demko, and Ser- Sergei Bobrovsky. It's likely going to be Connor Hellebuck. I, I can't imagine it's, it's not going to be. Sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, but I mean, the voting is already in, so people are like, well, he didn't do for good in the first round. Like they don't. The, the the voting has to be in before the playoffs start. So he was the best goalie. Congratulations. You can't, you can't really. Yeah. Uh, I hope Vezna is big enough to uh, fit into his golf bag. Yes. <laughs> um, and then the Calder was also announced, and I'm I'm looking for. I know it was it was Brock Faber and uh, Connor Bedard. Um. Oh, Luke Hughes was the third one. That was and and you know what, man. I was talking to Seth from Locked On Wild about this. If I had a vote, it'd go to Brock Faber. Mm-hmm. I'm and, and I'm not saying that Connor Bedard had a bad season. Um, I thought for all the fanfare that was evolved around him, I thought he had a, a a good year. And you can see like where things are going for him. He's going to be a superstar. Brock Faber. Um, so much more was asked of him on a team that was really kind of in the thick of things and in the mix up until late in the season. And he played heavy minutes for a rookie defense. Like he, he, he played a lot. He produced, I, I, I don't explain it to me. It's going to go to Bedard because it, this is name recognition right here. This, this is totally. And, and if you want to say like, Hey, all of the fanfare around him and he held up to it. Fine. I, I wouldn't disagree with that. But I think from a production standpoint, my, this this should be Brock Faber, and, and I don't think it's going to be. No, it should be Brock Faber because, again, you're asking hockey writers to look at stats, and they're not going to do that. And they're looking at Bedard, 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 and guess what? He's going to win the award because you cannot continue this Bedard, Bedard, Bedard story next year and not say Calder winning Connor Bedard and then continue the story next year because this is I feel bad for any rookie that debuted this year and had to right. play because this was his award from opening night and and they were terrible like even with him and he missed a lot of games due to injury not his fault but um you know I mean how much if you remove Faber from that team believe it or not they're they're a worse off team by by they might be I don't want to say in the realm of where Chicago Blacks Hawks are, but they wouldn't have been in the mix as late as they were without him. And the Blackhawks weren't in the mix at all. So uh, it, th- this is a total popularity contest. Um, and to not give it to him, because he can never win it again, right? To not give it to him, I think writers will be like, well, that, you know, we want him to have a nice resume. And to have that on his resume for could be one of the all time greats when it's all said and done. If you look back at, well, he didn't win the Calder. I mean, I don't agree with it, but um, I think that's where we're headed with this. Unfortunate for for Brock Faber because he was awesome this year. And that's an Avalanche fan saying that about a wild player. (laughs) This will be like Taylor Hall getting the heart. Everybody knows who's the real Calder Mm. winner this year, but it's, it's, definitely bedards because this is long-term storytelling right they're setting up the long-term right. story of connor bedard and it starts here exactly 100 right so uh we'll see what comes out tomorrow i don't know the order of these things i i know they do the heart last so um i think they do the heart last pretty sure they do so maybe coach of the year will be friday which we know this will be another year and i don't think this is a year that you I can't make an argument for him in, in previous years. I definitely could for Jared Bednar, but uh, this year, probably not. So. Yeah. This will be bonus. We'll yeah. be taking Bednar spot yeah. this year. Oh, of getting shafted. No bonus will be it, taking where Bednar usually kind of gets the mention. Yeah. Oh, will, 
this will be bonus taking yeah. over that spot. We'll see. All right. That is going to wrap it up for today and for this week. So we will be back on Monday and we will know our opponents. So we will definitely dive into that uh, and whatever else happens between now and over the weekend. So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated for Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche podcast, and we'll see you guys on Monday.